to what's been going on, how this actual cold weather temperatures forms and moves across the planet affects the temperatures we feel in our communities all across the world. Well, meteorologist Alex Calameda explains the science behind the polar vortex. The polar vortex is a current of air that spins in the Arctic and keeps cold air locked in place there. So it's funny because the stronger the polar vortex is, the less Arctic air we see here in the United States. And I'm going to explain this in my kitchen using a spoon to turn up this pot of water. The tortellini here, that's your cold air. When the water's spinning fast, the tortellini or the cold air stays in place. But the weaker that that spin is, the more of a tortellini or of a cold air spreads out. So when you think polar vortex and you think strong is bad, you actually want a strong one if you don't want cold air. Unfortunately, that nor'easter that's been the topic of conversation this week is pushing northward, and that's going to help disrupt the polar vortex. So it splits, and now you have a piece of the polar vortex developing in eastern Canada, sending a wave of Arctic air down into the Midwest, the northern plains. Basically, the gates are open open and cold air gets to move in and this air is seriously cold. We're talking temperatures as low as 30 degrees below zero for Sunday morning in parts of Canada. Even parts of the northern U.S. could get in on that level of cold and then that pushes farther southward but it doesn't make it into the southeast for Tuesday morning. Model guidance is showing temperatures still in the 30s and 40s across South Carolina so it could actually be rather mild because that cold air is staying mostly locked in place in the Midwest. West. Now, if you fast forward to the end of next week, some of the model guidance is showing that a little bit of cold air will push into the southeast. But here's the thing. At that point, it is a bit more moderated and the coldest temperatures stay over the Ohio River Valley and that could change. But this is the time of the year that we need to watch for some of that winter cold. Snowflakes fell on Tuesday in places like Blyfoot and Winsboro. No accumulations, but it was cold enough. Now, as far as February goes, that's your best opportunity for snow historically in Columbia. Snow does not happen very often. Only six out of a thousand February days see an inch or more of snow in Columbia. But with an active pattern like this, never hurts to keep an eye out. I'm News 19 meteorologist Alex Calamia.